Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll be primarily discussing example 7.3, and in the process, we'll discuss equivalent circuit, power and torque of an induction motor. And this is from chapter 7 of Mr. Chapman's book. So to understand the equivalent circuit of an induction motor, we have to understand the transformer circuit because there is a lot of similarity between transformer and induction motor. So let's see the transformer first. We know there are two coils, primary and secondary. Primary we connect with the source and the secondary is connected with the load. Exactly same way in the case of an induct induct induction motor we have a primary or we call it a stator circuit and then we have a rotor circuit the only difference is that here we connect the load with the secondary but here we short circuit the load so that's the only difference so to understand uh, the equivalent circuit of induction motor we'll take help of the equivalent circuit of a transformer and you have learned that the transformer equivalent circuit is represented like this. These are the, uh, this is the copper loss and the leakage flux. This is uh, due to core, core loss and core reactance. Then on the secondary side also we have the copper loss and leakage. Now to solve this type of problem we learned that we have to transform either the primary circuit to the secondary or the secondary circuit to the primary side and the resultant circuit look like this and this is the secondary side transformed to the primary side and you can see this is multiplied with the transformation ratio so exactly similar circuit will have uh, for the induction motor so this circuit is for the induction motor it is almost similar circuit this is due to the rotor part and this is the stator part. Now if we correlate with the power flow diagram we have studied earlier, the input power, then stator copper loss, then we have the core loss. So just follow this. This is the input here. This is due to the stator, stator copper loss and this is due to the core loss and then the power available is called the air gap power in the air gap power if we subtract the copper loss then we get the power converted and after power conversion if you subtract the friction and stray loss then we get the output power now this is after the P converted this portion will take care of that those losses and here it is more clear the PAG the air gap power is now going towards uh, PRCL rotor copper loss and majority is going to the as uh, becoming P converted so from here PAG PRCL and P converted so this is taking off PRCL or the rotor copper loss and also uh, it will take care of the power converted so we'll, 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 we'll discuss this okay now this only resistance is taking both uh, rotor copper loss and power conversion converted so for ease we divide this into two parts one part we call it R2. This is exclusively taking care of the rotor copper loss. And the remaining portion that is R2 over S minus R2 will be the remaining resistance. And this will uh, take care of the power conversion or the load circuit. So this is the final equivalent circuit. Now the powers or uh, equations have been derived in the book so I'll not go into the details this is the equation for um, air gap power this is the equation for uh, rotor copper loss power 
and this is the equation for power converted and for ease uh, I have jotted down all the formulas used in the, in this chapter so the power input this is the uh, total, uh, total power it can be written as 3 into uh, power per phase then the stator copper air gap power rotor copper loss etc okay now let's come on to the question or example 7.3 solved in the book I'll only try to make it slightly easier for our uh, our understanding so these are the parameters that are given the most important is to understand this a 460 volt so this is the line to line voltage our circuit is for single phase per phase so we have to convert the line to line voltage into phase voltage this is the input power frequency four pole y connected now y connected means that the line current and the phase current will be same okay and then the total rotational losses are given here and it is assumed to be constant the rotor slip is 2.2 percent or if you divide it by 100 it will be 0 0.022 we have to find these parameters the speed stator current power factor power converted and power out torque induced and torque load and efficiency so let's do it one by one first one the speed whenever we talk of a speed it is actually the mechanical shaft speed and for ease I have uh, put in all the values in the figure this is the formula that we will be using to find the mechanical shaft speed nm and it is given over 1 minus slip into n times sink speed now sink speed we can calculate from this formula sink speed is 120 frequency divided by pole now frequency is 60 hertz given and pole is 4 so we'll use that to find n sink putting in the values this is the speed sink speed in revolutions per minute now we have to we can we need to convert this in radians per second as well so uh, we can use that subsequently so to convert that into radians per second uh, all we have to do is multiply by 2 pi and divide by 60 so it becomes 188.5 radians per second okay now and sync is known now we can find the uh, mechanical shaft speed by just plugging in the value 1800 rpm so this will be the mechanical shaft speed in revolutions per minute and this will also convert into radians per second so in the same way we just plug in or using this one so it is 184.4 radians per second Okay, this is the first part now the second part is the stator current now this is the stator current so we have to find that the stator current is given by the phase voltage divided by total impedance and how much is for phase voltage as I told that 460 is given which is line to line if we divide this by under root 3 this will be the phase voltage so 266 phase voltage 266 we need to calculate all these impedances so we can uh, find the current need to find z total now in the first step we are adding these two we calling it z2 so z2 is adding these two values and if you use your calculator in complex mode you can very easily calculate this I'll give you a link for the video that I have for using calculator in complex mode okay so we found Z2 we wrote the values of Z2 now here you can see we have uh, eliminated RC and this is because the question says that the 
core loss is lumped in with the rotational loss. Now, this is the rotation lo uh, loss given. So, core loss is uh, uh, lumped in with that, and that is why we are not considering the uh, resistance RC here. Okay, now, first of all, we solve this in parallel. We call it ZF. So, JXM parallel Z2 and solving Z2, plugging in the values 26.3 and this value here. Solving, we get 11.05 plus J6.689. Again, you use your calculator in complex mode. Okay, so ZF we have found. And now the total resistance we can find by adding the two. So Z total is adding the given resistance, the, these two, and the ZF. So this is Z total. So our circuit will now become like this. We have the voltage, we know Z total, and therefore we can find the current I1. So I1 is V over Z total, putting, solving, we get this answer which may be very near to what is given in the book or there may be some variation. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you have mastered the use of calculator in complex mode, all this can be done in just one step. Voltage divided by this total impedance. These two in series with parallel shown here and adding these two. So you can do it in one step. Okay, part C of the question is to find power factor. Now, power factor is cos theta. Now, theta from here we got is 33.6. So, cos of 33.6 is 0 0.833 and lagging because the sign is negative here. Okay, part D is to find the power converted and power out. So, power converted is here. The power converted formula is 1 minus S P A G P air gap. So we have to find P air gap. And P air gap, if you look from here, this is the input minus P stator copper loss and minus P core loss. But in this case, core loss is lumped with the rotational loss, therefore this will uh, eliminate so this is the formula for power air gap now how much is pn we have to calculate that and how much is pscl so pn from here we can just plug in the values and pn will be 12530 watt now for pscl we will use this formula and again, plugging in the values, PSCL is 685 watt. Therefore, PAG is PN minus PSCL, plugging in the values, it is 11845 watt. And now we can calculate P converted. So P converted is 1 minus SPAG. S is, as I mentioned, it is 22.2%, uh, which will be 0 0.022, and multiplied by PAG. So this is the converted power. So first part we have found. Now we need to find the second part, that is output power. And if you look at, at the diagram, P out is P converted plus these losses. And these losses, that is friction and windage and stray losses, can be also called the rotational losses. And rotational loss is given here, 1100 watt, so we'll plug in that value. So P out would be 11585 minus 1100 watt, so this is the output power. And now we have to find the 
torque induced torque and load torque the torque is given by this formula power divided by the rotational speed which we have calculated from here if you remember in the last video uh, last slide 188.5 so we'll plug in that value so induced torque will be 62.8 newton meter and similarly the output torque will have similar formula p out divided by omega m omega m was 184.4 with that we get 56.9 newton meters so this is part e and finally we have to calculate efficiency and we know efficiency is output over input percentage plugging in the values so the efficiency of the motor is 83.7 percent so I hope uh, this gives you an understanding how you can solve this type of a question very easily if you follow these steps. Thank you.